Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. This seven star Hisuian Decidueye Terror Raid event is now back for its second time out in Scarlet and Violet. We're going to go over all of the details as well as the best builds to solo this with in your game. Hisuian Decidueye returning in Scarlet and Violet for its second time around from the 13th of October as of recording this video until the 15th of October. But do bear in mind if you keep the Hisuian Decidueye in your game by not going online after the 15th, you'll be able to use this raid until you're finished with it, especially if you're farming it for the high cost items that you can get from running through this raid in your games. It is going to be Terra Grass, it is going to be level 100, it will have its hidden ability Scrappy, meaning it can hit ghost type attacks with its fighting type of moves that would normally be immune to it. Its moves are going to be Triple Arrows, which is that fighting type signature attack that it does have. Brave Bird, a big flying type coverage attack, it's going to have ghost coverage with Shadow Claw. Leaf Blade as well as its main grass type attack. It has a high critical hit chance as well. And additional moves is going to have bulk up which boosts its attack and its defense by one stage every time it uses it. Sword Stance boosts its attack by two stages every time it uses it. And does have access to grassy terrain and the Leaf Storm attack which is another grass type attack but a special based attack not hitting as hard as Leaf Blade and will lower Decidueye's special attack whenever this attack is used. It will of course have the mightiest mark, it can never be shiny so this is shiny lock and it has no held item with the adamant nature and can only be catched once per save file as well so that is something to bear in mind. The item drops are very good as per 7 star terror raid event. You're going to get a lot of XL and large candies. You're going to get a lot of proteins, calcium, vitamins, as well as grass, terra shards, TMs, and an ability patch, as well as a chance to get ability capsules, bottle caps, PP ups, adamant mints, nuggets, and other high cost items. So, like I say, the event itself, these are the details running from the 13th until the 15th. And this will be the last time that Hisuian Decidueye will be in our games. So to access this event in your games, you're going to need to come online and come to your Poker Portal, come down to Mystery Gifts and get Poker Portal news. And this will update the dens in the Paldea region. This raid event will not be appearing in the Kitakami region. If you do have the DLC, it will only be available in the Paldea region. And once you've done that update, just open your map and you'll be able to locate the 7 star terror raid event, find it there and fly over to it. Now we've got a number of builds that we're going to be featuring in today's video. You've got an array of choices that you can go in and solo this raid with pretty easily. Now we know how it works and the interactions with it. First one I'm going to start off with is a brand new build that we haven't featured here on the channel and it is going to be for that brand new DLC Pokemon Pheasantipity. Now I understand that a lot of you might not have the DLCs but if you do, Pheasantipity a really good Pokemon to take into this raid. It's going to be Poison and Fairy. Terra type is going to be Poison and it is going to have the Shell Bell as its held item. Make sure that it is level 100 and you have hyper trained all of its IVs. So bottle cap the IVs to make sure that it has 31 in all of its stats. You're going to want to have the EV spread of 252 HP, 252 defense with a modest nature. The ability is toxic chain on this one. And the moveset is going to be taunt, nasty plot, acid spray and venom shock. We'll get into the raid in a moment to show you exactly how this works. But going to be a very consistent, very quick way for you to run through the raids for soloing it, for getting those high cost items if you want to farm for those items over the weekend while this event is running. Next Pokemon we are featuring is a Pokemon we've actually covered on the channel. If you want to see how the Gengar interacts within the raid, how you need to approach it and what you need to do when you go up against the Hisuian Decidueye, I'll link it down in the description below so you can check that out after the video. But the build itself, as always with all the builds that we're featuring in today's video, they will be down in the description as well. So you can take a closer look after the video. Again, level 100, Poison, Terra Typing on the Gengar and Shell Bell as the held item for a line of recovery. And then we've got the move set of Nasty Plot, Acid Spray, Taunt and Sludge Bomb and an EV spread of 252 HP and 252 Defense with a Modest Nature and that Cursed body ability so that is the Gengar build there the basic premise of the Gengar like I say is covered in the other video that we covered solely on the Gengar so do check that out if you want to see how you can easily solo Hisuian Decidueye with the Gengar in this raid 
The next build we are featuring is going to be Corviknight. It is a flying and a steel type Pokemon. The terror typing on this bird is going to be flying. We're going to have the Shell Bell once again for a line of recovery. Level 100, max those IVs out as well by hyper training them with an EV spread of 252 hint HP and 252 in defense with an adamant nature this time. The mirror armor ability, which is a hidden ability, so you're going to have to use an ability patch if it doesn't have that ability already. Then the moveset is going to be Roost. Now just bear in mind that Roost is an egg move, so you're going to have to teach that either using the Mirror Herb item and finding another Pokemon in your boxes with Roost and then set up a picnic. As long as the Corviknight has a spare move slot, the Roost will be transferred onto it. We can do it the traditional way by just breeding on the egg move in the first place. Then we've got Bulk Up that's going to boost your attack and defense by one stage every time you use it. Reflect as well is going to bolster those defenses even further and a drill peck as well. Again, the Corviknight and the next Pokemon that we're featuring, which is Seraledge, are featured in another separate video that go over exactly the steps that you need to take with these Pokemon and how to interact in the raid so you can beat the Hisuian Decidueye very easily. Again, that video will be linked in the description below if you want to check that out as well. Now, we've already mentioned it. Seraledge is the next Pokemon that we're going to be featuring, and it will be a fire and ghost type. The terror typing is going to be fire. It is going to have the held item of metronome and it will be set to level 100 just make sure you do max those ivs out as well the move set is going to be bulk up will o -Wisp, clear smog and bitter blade with an ev spread of 252 in hp 252 in attack and an adamant nature with the ability flash fire again like the Corviknight, like i've mentioned the video going over the steps and how to use these pokemon effectively to beat hisuian decidueye Will be linked in the description but these are two very solid builds that you can take in as an option to beat this and farm for those items over the weekend and the final pokemon we are featuring today is something that we haven't covered on the channel yet but a lot of other creators have featured this pokemon and it is a solid choice going in so we are using it as an option going into this raid as well and it is going to be toxicity is electric and poison typing we have the terror typing of poison held item is the shell bell again set to level 100 just make sure you max out those ivs with a move set of taunt acid spray venom shock and sludge bomb and an ev spread of 252 in special attack and 252 in defense with a bold nature and make sure that the ability is set to technician because that'll give you the boost on the acid spray because it is below 60 so it will give you a 1.5 boost to the acid spray meaning that you're hitting a little bit harder and getting a bit more damage off every turn rather than relying on any of the other abilities that the toxicity has access to at least you're getting some benefit with that technician ability the basic premise with the toxicity is turn one go for a taunt you're going to stop the decidueye on that turn two going for a bulk up after it nullifies all the stat boosts on your side of the field then after that you're going to want to go for your sludge bombs now keep an eye on the taunt in effect on the hisuian decidueye on turn four you probably want to go for another taunt because the taunt should wear off after three turns go for another taunt because this is the turn before it's going to set up its shield it's going to nullify all the stat boosts on your side of the field and it's also going to try and set up a sword stand so that additional taunt before it sets up the shield is going to nullify the ability it's going to prevent it from setting up that sword stand which is really important for the longevity of toxicity throughout the raid you might get knocked out that next turn but before you do try and go for an acid spray the next target is going to be getting three acid sprays off with your toxicity now you might get knocked out once you might get knocked out twice in the process of this but don't terrestrialize until you've got those three acid sprays off and you're in a good position health wise to go for the sludge bombs and then you want to just spam sludge bomb you're going to be going doing good damage recovering a lot of health as well keeping yourself in that healthy position while you're chipping away at its hp and also keep an eye out for if you poison the hisu in decidueye now if you do poison it like we do in this raid then revert to using the Venoshock. Venoshock will double in power if the target Pokemon is poisoned and Sludge Bomb having a 30% chance to poison the target. It does mean that you're going to have an option of a more stronger attack going forward in the raid. So if you do get the poison, then just start clicking the Venoshock button. And after that, you should be able to close the raid up very quickly. It's not the fastest out of the Pokemon that we featured today, but it is a very good option nonetheless and something that you can build in your games 
and have pretty good success with taking on the Hisui Decidueye by yourself. So that is everything I'm going to feature and I'm going to go into the raid now and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this with the Pheasantipity. Okay, once you're in the raid, the first turn, we're going to go for a taunt. That is to prevent the Decidueye from going for a bulk up turn two. So we take a Brave Bird turn one after the taunt. And you'll be able to see before we get an attack off, it's going to nullify all the stat changes and abilities on our side of the field. And then it will also go for a bulk up, which has been uh, prevented. So that's good in preventing its stats from getting any further. Turn two, we're going to go for a Venom Shock. And then turn three, we're going to keep an eye on the taunt counter here because we want to try and get a taunt off, an additional taunt off before the shield goes up if we can. Now we'll just go for another Venom Shock here. And then the next turn is when, after this turn, so going into turn four, we will be just checking the taunt counter because it should have worn off. So we want to get a taunt off before that shield does go up. And you can check the counter on the Decidua here. The taunt has worn off, so we want to make sure we do go for that taunt. Just be quick when you're clicking in your Venice Shocks. You don't really want to be going for the Acid Sprays until after that shield goes up, which will be after this turn. So we are able to get the taunt off. The Decidueye here paralyzed as well. So if you do get a decent raid partner next to you, it will make a big difference. And now we see the negative effects removed from its side of the field. It will set up that shield as well. And it will try and get a Swords Dance off, but it will be prevented because that taunt has been refreshed. It's in place again to prevent that Swords Dance going off. Now we want to concentrate on going for those acid sprays. We want to try and get three acid sprays off now, lower that special defense by uh, minus six. So maximizing our damage. And along the way, if you get the poison, the toxic chain does have a really good chance of activating 30% chance with any attack that you hit onto the city Y, even through the shield. That will double the power of the Venice Shock. Now you might get knocked out along the way, but it's not going to matter too much early on in this battle. We don't really want to commit to Terrasalizing until we've got those three acid sprays off and we're in a good healthy position with our HP. Of course, the Decidue are going to stay poisoned. So our Venice Shock, when we do come to attack, it is going to be hitting for very big damage. Double in power as long as the target Pokemon is poisoned. So we do take the knockout, but like I said, don't worry about that too much. It's not going to really affect the outcome of the raid. Uh, it's just going to just slow us down a tiny, tiny smidgen of a bit. But uh, all part of the process. So don't worry here. As we see the Decidueye try and go for the Grassy Train. Not going to be able to set it up and does go for that Leaf Storm. Then it normally goes for around that turn seven. So we want to get one more Acid Spray off here. Uh, what we can do as well is just go for the Terrestrialization now. Just go for that because we're pretty safe at this point we can get that final acid spray off we're in no danger of getting knocked out either from this range with the defensive capabilities that pheasant dippity's got so like i say you just want to terrestrialize when you are in a really healthy position and you're not in any danger of getting knocked out at all so this final acid spray will take the his suing decidueye down to minus six special defense meaning that your attacks are going to be hitting as hard as possible and we can then stack on top of this depending on what this brave bird does yeah, the critical hit's not ideal there, but we're still in a safe enough position where we can go for at least one nasty plot. Now, if you don't get critical hit there, you can probably get two nasty plots off before you start attacking. But really, uh, looking at it from our point of view now, we'll probably take a Brave Bird for our troubles. We're not going to be in the healthiest position. Probably take another one, but it's not worth risking getting critical hit. So we can just launch that Venice Shock off now. And because it's poison, like I've said, it's going to be double damage. And with all the drops and the attack boost that we've done, we're going to be doing huge damage. So that puts us in a good position now where we can probably get another nasty plot off before we break the shield and um, kind of clean this raid up. But you can see how quick uh, and the, the snowball effect is once you kind of get set up with the Pheasantipity. And because it's really good defensively, it is going to be able to kind of just take these hits from the Hisuian Decidueye as long as you're able to kind of stop the setup of them, of course, a lot easier throughout the raid. So we'll take another Brave Bird and then we're going to be in a position where we can just absolutely snowball through this raid. It is going to go for a triple arrows. We'll lower our defense, but um, we don't need to worry about that. It doesn't lower our defense that time, but uh, one more Venice Shock. Let's see if it is enough with the minus six defense and the... Ooh, not quite, not quite, not quite. If we went for another nasty plot there, I think we would have knocked it out. But uh, you can see how good... The Pheasant Dippity can be throughout this raid. You've just got to time it right with those taunts. Prevent that sword stance going up. 
but it is another option to use especially if you do like the teal mask pokemon that we've got from the dlcs but it is as easy as that and uh, maybe not as quick as the gengar raid i still say i still put my money on the gengar raid being the quickest one out of everything that we've covered in today's video but a very good option nonetheless with the pheasant deputy if you don't want to use any of the other options you fancy just having something to change it up over the weekend if you are farming for these items so that is the pheasantipity that is pretty much how you run through it and it's going to be as easy as that so you can farm all the high cost items like you can see here which are very very valuable for uh, building future raid builds or doing competitive or anything like that that you want to be doing in the game and of course once you beat the raid if you want to get the another one back on your map because you only get one appearing at a time just open your map come to your home menu down into your system settings then down into system down into day and time just make sure that your synchronized clock by the internet is set to off and come down the date and time and then just toggle through these options click ok and then hit your home menu back into the game and all the dens will respawn and you'll be able to locate that seven star terror raid wherever it is on your map and then fly over to it and do the same thing all again with whichever build you pick uh, from the ones that we've covered in today's video so that is everything for today's video friends the hisu and decidui will be running until the 15th on sunday and on sunday we should get a new seven star terror raid event announced for the coming week which will be the next one which will be very exciting so let me know down in the comment section below what you think will be the next seven star raid that we'll see in scarlet and violet i think it might be i've heard rumors of hisui and samurott hisui and typhlosion but I'm hoping we get a curveball and something a little bit different. I would love to see the Sinnoh starters, uh, Infernape, Empoleon, or even Torterra in the next raid for Skull and Violet. But whatever it is, we'll cover it here on the channel as soon as it is announced. Have a lot of fun with the raid this weekend or for however long you keep it in your game to farm for the items. And I hope you found the builds useful. If you have, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel as well if you want to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Skull and Violet content. I'll see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.